it's Ella from Spline. Lighting is a huge, and I mean huge, part of your 3D scene. Just by changing the lighting, ah, ha, ha, ha. so can you change the emotion of your project. And so much more. In this video, we are going to take a look at all the key things you need to know about lighting your 3D scenes in Spline. So let's get right to it. Every time we create a file in Spline, by default, we'll have a light in the left panel. This is the directional light. By selecting it, you can move and reposition the light just like any other object or 3D element in Spline. Doing this will change the way the light is cast. But this is just one of the types of lights that you can use. So how do you create or add lights to your scene? Let's delete this layer now, let's go to the plus icon to create a new one. Here, you can scroll and after all of these objects, at the very end, you'll find the lights. You can see that there are three types of lights. Point light, directional light, and spotlight. Let's start with the directional light. After adding the light to your scene, you can go to the right panel and modify the settings like the intensity or the size. This type of lighting is best for simulating the lighting from the sun or used in more open scenes. The position of your light can bring different results to your final design. So play around with your light's positioning to see the different results. This design is an example where you could use the directional light to create and simulate sunlight on our planet. In the planet's texture, Maxime here has placed an image layer with the texture of Earth. And then on top of that, there's another image layer, but this image layer has Earth at night, so we see all the city lights. Then he adjusted this night image layer to have a blend mode of screen. This way, when the directional light hits Earth, the daytime texture becomes visible, while the other parts of the Earth that are not touched by the light still have that night texture. You can see as we're moving the light around, it's sort of turning off that night texture and turning on the daytime texture. In this scene, we're using the point light, which you can find again in the top toolbar. Point lights, as the name implies, emit light from a single point in space and fade away with distance. These lights are great if you want to add them to objects in your scene to represent the light that these objects could emit. Think of like a house lamp, traffic light, car headlights, etc. Like the directional light, you can adjust the point light settings. You can change the color, intensity, distance, and decay. The more decay you add, the weaker and softer the shadows will appear. You can also control the shadows and resolution here. Additionally, you can increase the radius of the light here. Here you can see that when I move the light, the emitted light is very focused. It works great if you want to create light that bounces off an element, like this shape, and create a dull lighting effect. This design, also by Maxime, is a great example of how to use this type of light. So here we have this light bulb element, and it's using this beautiful glass texture. If we simply add a point light inside of the light bulb, we can create this realistic lighting effect. And like the directional light, you can adjust the settings and the intensity in the right panel. You can also change the color and it looks great in different shades. And for our final light, the spotlight. If you want to highlight an element, say very dramatically like in the movies or on stage, this is your type of light. Again, you can adjust the settings like intensity, distance, and for this light in particular, the angle. You can also use the spotlight for things like street lights or lamps. Now that we've covered all three types of lighting in Spline, how to add them to our scene and how to adjust their settings, let's quickly turn our attention to the material panel. It is crucial to understand that materials in Spline work like a layer system. If the light layer is at the bottom of the panel, the light will not affect your object. To see the light affect your objects and the materials that you've applied, you need to have the lighting layer turned on and at the top of your material panel. Within the lighting layer, you can explore different kinds of lighting such as Fong, Physical, Tune, and Lambert. Fong is the most common and the default lighting type. Be sure to experiment with these options to find the best type for your scene. 
Now let's take this example and see how the light is being used in this scene. We have a spotlight which is placed right under this street lamp and it's simulating the light emitted from the street lamp. And I can adjust the rotation and have the light point in different direction. For example, here we can see how it affects the house's wall. Lights are pretty great and we can take them one step further by animating them or making them interactive. So let's look at this simple example by animating a change in the light's intensity. In my base state, I'll lower the intensity completely and in my state, I'll increase it just by a bit. Now we have a change in the light's intensity between the states and the next thing we can do is go and create a new start event and go to play mode and there we go. You can keep adjusting other properties between states, increasing the angle, or you can try moving the position of the light between the two states. Here we have this button and it's using the mouse down effect to trigger the motion between each state. What we can do is add a new transition action, but select my light as the target. In the mode, we can choose toggle and select my base state and the state with intensity changes. We can then adjust the speed here and we can create this realistic light switch effect. And this is a way to add some interactions using your lights. Another easy interaction that you can achieve with lights is using the follow event. This will make your light follow your cursor, which can be very attractive for websites or landing pages. So we can do this really quickly and really simply by using this example that we've created. So we have a rectangle to act as our back wall where our light is going to bounce off of, and we're going to be using this point light. Then just select your light, create a new event and select follow. And as you can see, the cursor is automatically selected as our default target. Now we can go to play mode and that's it. Just like that, you've created this really cool interactive flashlight effect. Something fun and easy to do and you can definitely try on your next website. Also try adding some more elements to your scene to make it a little more dynamic, like adding this sphere. It's great to see the shadows being projected off of these elements. Now we'll show you some tips and tricks to get even more out of your lighting in your scenes. Try playing around with the color and position of your light. This is key to conveying the message that you want. For example, using a blue light can create a feeling of calm, tranquility, peace, and order. On the other hand, red lights are more associated with intense emotions like danger, which can heighten tension in a scene. Don't you think? <laughs> Another tip is that you can use more than one light with different tones to create a dual lighting effect. And I don't know if you know this, but you can simulate light without using light in spline. That's right. This example by Vexus, it has zero lights in the scene and instead it's using the depth layer. So it's using color to simulate lighting. If I select one of the cubes and peek into the material panel, you will see that the depth layer is creating this gradient effect that simulates light. To affect all the cubes, simply go to the position option and select world instead of local. So when I adjust my gradient, it will affect all the objects that that depth layer is applied to. You can also combine lights and the depth layer to add more detail, like in this example. Here we have this fire scene. We are using a light and the depth layer at the same time to simulate the lighting of the fire. So to do this, what we did was have the depth layer applied to the rocks around the fire, keeping the position at world. It's a great way to add more detail and avoiding adding too many lights, which can affect the performance of your scene. We like to recommend using no more than three lights. Here's an example from another scene where we use the same technique. You can find this in the library to explore it further or remix it and make it your own. Another thing you can consider is adjusting the blend mode of the depth layer. In this example, it's set to screen. Try experimenting to get different results. Now in this example, we have a cube and a point light. I want the light of the cube to reflect on the surface of the sphere when they collide. 
I'll take the point light from the left panel and move it into the cube so this will create a group. And just like that, the light is now attached to the cube and will follow it within the interaction. Pretty cool. Now in our library, you can find designs to explore and edit. And this is a great design to learn lighting from. This is called Forest Lights. In addition to the point light being used, we also have effects like Bloom and Vignette that are enhancing this dark forest ambiance. Let's do something cool with this scene. I can repeat what we did earlier by grouping the lights with the spheres and then adding a follow event. Done, we've transformed this scene into an interactive experience. Great to see how light affects the elements in the scene, like the river and the trees. Another thing we wanna teach you is that you can move the light in your scene by dragging it as usual. But when you move your camera, the light and the shadows remain static. You'll notice that as I rotate the camera, the shadows stay in the same place. But there is a trick to make the light follow your camera movement so your object or subject is always in the best lighting. Simply create a new camera and group it with your light. Now go to play mode. Now you can see no matter how you move your camera or what angle you're looking at your subject with, the lighting direction is always following your camera, ensuring that they're in the best lighting. And here we have this pretty simple scene with a variety of different objects that you would see in like a living room or office. And each of these objects will have a shadow that's being casted. Now, this is just using a simple light, but there is another way that you can play with shadows and add some more details to them. And this is using the ambient shadow option. So to open that up, all we need to do is deselect everything and enable ambient shadows. Here we can adjust things like the radius, bias, and even change the tint of our shadow. And you can select which quality you'd like from normal or high. Also, it's important to keep in mind, depending on the file that you want to apply ambient shadows to, this can impact your scene's performance and cause your loading times to increase. So you want to be able to find the right balance of using ambient shadows with your scene. Another tip and reminder is to experiment with different types of lights and remember to have fun with it. That's it for this video. We hope you found it useful and are excited to try lighting in Spline and see how lighting can enhance your designs and change their vibe. Let us know in the comments what else you'd like to learn and remember to join our Discord server to share your latest Spline works with us and if you have any questions, feel free to ask us there. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.